worship on our Savior's Lutheran Church. It's time for the anthem. And if you know the song, I encourage you to sing along with us.
and also with you. Let's sing the Kyrie together. table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 25, 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God, and I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed from old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat, with the shade of clouds, the song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. 
and the disgrace of his peoples he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes to us from Paul speaking again in Philippians to the people of Philippi. He says in chapter 4, starting with verse 1, I love you and I long to see you, for you are my joy and my reward for my work. My beloved friends, stay true to the Lord. Dear brother Christians, I love you and now I, I want to plead with those two dear women, Eodia and Sintachi, please, with the Lord's help, quarrel no more, be friends again. And I ask you, my true teammate, to help these women for they work side by side with me in telling the good news to others, and they work with Clement, too, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the Book of Life. Always be full of joy. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are unselfish, and considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. And now, brothers, as I close the letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about. Keep putting into practice all you learned from me and saw me doing and the grace of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Chapter 22. Glory to you, Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves 
saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm and another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them, the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to this wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed there was a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot. Throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called and few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. This parable poses a challenge for us. A king throwing a grand party for his son's wedding. Everyone, that's right, everyone is invited. The king pulls out the stops for a tremendous, glorious celebration and a meal. Well, we get a hint about this when Jesus starts out, the kingdom of heaven may be compared with a king. Here's the hint, the kingdom of heaven this sounds like a wedding between heaven and earth. I would say that actually this parable is about an engagement between heaven and earth. And it shows a betrothal, a betrothal of all humanity to be wedded with God in Christ. Jesus was speaking that day of a great and promised feast, the way we pray in our liturgy so often. For in the parable, we're hearing about a unique, grand banquet, one that would never happen but once. A king sends out servants to invite the guests, and the first rounds of guests seem to be people with social importance, people with things that they would rather be doing. I suppose this first round had a limited guest list. I wouldn't have been on it. <laughs> well, they did not say yes to the king's servants. Simple. When a second, more urgent invitation went out, that team of inviters went out there with the original royal guest list, but they got an even worse response. Not only did them say they wouldn't come, they said, I need to go work on my farm or run my business. I cannot attend the banquet. Something like that. But it was worse because there were people in that second round who beat the servants who were doing the invitations and killed some of the servants of the king. For this king became furious. This king became furious because of the rejection the king sent out his army. Destruction ensued and fire. To me, it sounded like our civil wars in more modern times. But think for just a moment about this. Some of the first readers of Matthew's written witness of the ministry of Jesus Christ had seen a war, a civil war, of sorts between people who were pro-Rome and people who were pro 
independent Israel. And the sting of that during the days when this beautiful written testimony, the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew, was starting to circulate. Of course people in those days in the first century thought, this is like our life now. It reminds us also of something else Jesus had said in another chapter. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. I think Matthew understands violence in a personal way. So now comes a surprising twist. Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues this parable showing us that the royal banquet was given for everyone. The wedding party doors were wide open and the ruler redirected his passion from that fury and decided to offer the party to everyone, anyone who would come. And no one would want to refuse. He sent his servants to announce the wedding is ready, but those who were invited are not worthy. Go therefore in the main streets and invite everyone that you find to the wedding banquet. And that's what the servants did. They went into the streets and they got, gathered everyone they found, both the good and the bad. And so the wedding hall, as I said, was filled with guests. The doors of the kingdom of heaven thrown wide open is what I think about when I hear this. And the invitation to the marriage feast? Wow, it's extended to us even. How many years later? 2,000 and more. You don't even have to announce your name when you step into this kingdom. Nobody really has to know anything about it at, for, at first. It's God's amazing wedding feast. It's lavish. It's a celebration. You are invited. You're the guests. It's a party that you do not deserve and do not have to. It's fabulous. No one deserves it except the bridegroom, God's beloved son. Hmm. Jesus said the hall's packed with guests, both good and bad. Did you see that in the Bible? When did you ever receive such a free gift in all the world? You and I know the wedding invitation and reception generally nowadays imply some expectation we will bring a gift. But even that is not required in this once and for all wedding of God and everyone. All you need to do is say yes. Well, are there truly no obligations, no expectations, no embarrassing looks when you don't bring a gift? It's true. Just come. Come and celebrate because the Son of God is taking his bride, the church. So say yes and don't worry. Jesus would have us think about this. What it, would it mean for you to wholeheartedly say yes to God every day? Why do I say wholeheartedness? Well, don't forget the postscript to this parable. Jesus' parable concludes with one more thing. One of those guests in the wedding celebration gets kicked out. The king's doormen throw out a person who came to the feast not wholeheartedly ready to enter the occasion. He was a guest who, like the vineyard owner's son in Jesus' other parable, the one who said, yes, but did not go. It was a sign of missing, I don't know, commitment? A lack of wholeheartedness. How are we today responding to God's invitation? Have we said yes? Have what we said really meant yes? Don't forget the party that Jesus is throwing, the party he has in mind. 
for you and you and all of you without exception. At God's party, we don't even get to pick who gets to be in the party with us. It's everyone, and we might not even appreciate some of them. That doesn't matter. God wants them all. God wants you all. We get to choose how we respond to the invitation. That's all. And God's most gracious invitation seems to me irresistible most days, but not so good on others. I am changeable. So is everybody. That's when we need to remember the cross. The world's resistance is like saying no to an invitation to the wedding feast of the King of Heaven. The world's no took the form of the cross of crucifixion, but this refusal to accept <laughs> is forever opposed by God's yes. God's yes to you. God declared this yes on a day we call Easter, a day we like to celebrate often. The invitation is allowed to stay open, seemingly with no end. But I heard the scripture from what Paul wrote. He said, the Lord is coming soon. So you don't have to waste any more time. You can just come on in, come as you are, because the robe, the wedding robe is provided. Indeed, that wholeheartedness is a gift of grace too. Wow, what a wedding feast. Let's go. Let's sing. Join me in confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people, and we pray for your continued blessings in our ministry together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bountiful God, you feed us through the riches of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you order your, our lives by your providence. We give you thanks for laws, infrastructure, and leadership that structure and support our human endeavors. Align our purposes with your own, that all our undertakings might bring you glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Here other intercessions may be offered. Loving God, thank you for my brothers and sisters all around the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy, especially those who request our prayers. Jolene, Jerry, Kim, Debbie, Phil, Parker, Gloria, Cody, Judy, Lori, Betty, Marilyn, Don, Jennifer, Connor, Lisa, Myrna Montgomery family, youth ministry, and all faith ministries. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hospitable, hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.